Okay, okay, so Chris, welcome to Escape the Rat Race Radio today. How are you doing? Hey, Christian, I'm great. Thanks so much for having me, man. Ah, uh, you're a difficult man to pin down, right? I was. I think it's been two years since I uh, hooked up with you in London <laughs> for your side hustle workshop, and you know what? That's I don't right. know if you remember. I've still got the uh-huh. book right here, and you signed oh, wow. it. So that I, I'm going to give this away to one of our listeners today. So um, great. stay tuned in, everyone, because I'll tell you at the end how you can uh, get a copy that Chris has signed, and I have kept it in immaculate condition all this time. <laughs> so, Chris. Everybody knows you. For, you're the side hustle man, right? You know, you are podcasting so much. I think over 900 episodes of Side Hustle School now. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's right. We've been doing it every single day since uh, January 1, 2017. That's incredible. And uh, it just proves the point, right? That there's plenty of ideas out there. You just got to look for it. Exactly. You know, when I started it, I had no idea if I could keep it going, you know, because I made a commitment to do it for a year. And even then it was like, am I going to come up with 365 different stories? That's what I do on the podcast every day is tell a different story. But yeah, they just keep rolling in. I mean, people out there are doing all kinds of creative stuff. Yeah. Now we don't have a lot of time today, Chris. So if you don't mind, would you mind just give people a real quick background as to how you got to this point where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll do it in an like, accelerated rate. So let's see. Um, I was an aid worker for about four years in West Africa in my 20s, and that was a really transformative experience. Uh, Kind of came back to the States and started traveling uh, quite a bit. I had a goal to visit every country in the world, and so I started a blog called The Art of Nonconformity that was partly chronicling that journey, but then also like along the way, just connecting with interesting people. And uh, I started doing little projects, you know, which I don't think I even use the phrase side hustle, but little entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, to support myself. And then I realized that there were all kinds of people out there uh, in America, in Britain, elsewhere around the world uh, who were also doing this. And they hadn't really thought of themselves as entrepreneurs. They weren't part of like this startup scene, you know, they were just like regular people who wanted to find a way to make a living apart from their job. And so, um, you know, a series of things happened after that events and I started writing books. And then a few years ago, I began focusing on this whole concept of a side hustle uh, because I just think it's so empowering for people. And because I just, I know that there's a lot of people out there who don't necessarily resonate with the message of like, you should quit your job tomorrow, you know, because a lot of people can't do that for all kinds of reasons. Um, But everybody out there, I think, can do something, you know, to create more economic opportunity for themselves and then give them the choice, you know, at some point to quit their job or to do whatever is is important to them. Yeah. And that's, I think, the big definition here, isn't it, with side hustle? So it's build a business and make money, you know, without quitting your job. And this is Escape the Rat Race Radio. So, you know, there's probably a lot of people who are sat, you know, listening now and they're like, God, I just want to get out. I just want to get out. But, you know, Uh, you know, that was a mistake that I made. I actually just quit my job and I didn't really have uh-huh. that income stream coming in. And, and obviously now I tell everybody that is not the way to do it, right? Is uh, Yeah, I'm glad, you're t- I'm glad you're telling them that too. I feel like, you know, there's different seasons in life. And if somebody is 20 years old out there and like they hate their job, then you might as well just quit, right? Because you're 20 and like the stakes are low, you know, and you're probably not working the most amazing job in the world. But, you know, if you're a bit older, if you have a family, if you've got a mortgage or whatever else, like, you know, much wiser to um, to take the time and, um, but the whole point is, as you, as I'm sure you say all the time, you, you know, just because you shouldn't quit your job tomorrow doesn't mean there aren't things you can do, you know, to, to be, begin building that foundation so that you have the opportunity to, to quit or to move on or to do something different at some point. Yeah. Which leads me on to my question. What makes a successful side hustle? Is there a formula, Chris? And also yeah. I've been at your workshop, so I know there is a formula. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> your book, and I can see over your shoulder there, you've got the 100 side hustles, which is, is your latest book, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is like a collection of a hundred of the stories from the podcast. Uh, is there a formula? Well, I don't know if there's like a secret formula. In the, I mean, if I if I gave you a formula before, you should remind me what it was. You know, <laughs> maybe I need to apply that apply that myself. I, I think one one key thing though is um, when a lot of people use this phrase side hustle because it's very much in the culture now. People are talking about a lot of different things, and so it's good to just kind of define it a little bit and. The way that I think about it is a side hustle is not just another part-time job. You know, um, you, you're not really going to get ahead if you're working your 40 hour a week job and then you go and you work 20 hours a week for somebody else. Uh, it's not participating in the gig economy, which is another thing people talk about all the time. Oh, I'm going to drive for Uber, or drive for Lyft or whatever. Like those companies have done a really good job at marketing themselves and kind of putting forward this promise of like, you know, be an independent contractor. It's like, well, that's basically just a glorified part-time job, essentially. So it's not those things. For me, it's about uh, creating an asset for yourself, right? It's creating something that has a chance to earn money for you while you're doing something else, potentially, or at least uh, 
at least something that you have control over. So, you know, there's not another company or platform that's controlling the environment, your competition, capping your compensation, all that kind of stuff, right? So for me, um, I'm always encouraging people, like, what can you do to get to the point where tomorrow you wake up and there's a PayPal notification or a Venmo notification, a stranger has sent you money? Because that's a really good feeling. Even if it's a small amount of money, it could be $100, you know, 50 pounds, whatever. But it feels really, really good the first time you get it and, and the second time and the tenth time uh, apart from your paycheck. And so once you get to that point, it's like, okay, how can we kind of get more of that essentially? So I'm trying to help people create something for themselves basically. Yeah, and, and it's good that you define that, you know, because a lot of people who jump out of a job, they just get themselves a job, right? They become yeah, their own right. boss and they're stuck in right. it and they're working hard and they're making less money right. than they were in their job. So it's not really a business, yeah. right? Exactly. It's worse even almost because you're making you know less money or the same that you made in your job and you there's no way to turn it off. You know, right. at least with a job. You can go home at night and live your own life and you're not thinking about your job in an ideal world. Mm. But yes, if you're, if you're just kind of you know, freelancing on someone else's platform or something that it never really ends. Mm. Now, I know that I get this question. You must get this a lot, Chris. Uh, people come along to Escape the Rat Race events you know, and they're like, so what's the easiest business, right? What's the easiest thing that oh, I could do? Or, you know, or yeah. I, I, uh, I want to have an online business. And it's like, uh, oh, okay, well, that's quite broad. So, um, you know, yeah. where, where, where do you I, begin I, with, you know, kind of piecing uh, together, like, you know, the online business world, of course, has so many advantages. Right. And as you talked about, it's that recurring income where, mm -hmm. you know, it can just be happening wherever you are in the world or any time of day. Um, but you still have to go through some fundamental questions which mm -hmm. I think are back to basics of just any business building, right? Before deciding right. on what online business to do. So what are some of those yeah. steps, Chris? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious how you would answer that question in terms of like, what is the easiest thing to do or whatever? I'm, I mean, for me, I guess I would say, you know, okay, so first of all, like, what are your goals? What are we trying to accomplish here? Because, you know, you may not necessarily be looking for the easiest thing. You may be looking for something that's, you know, going to be more meaningful or it might take more work, but it's actually going to be more valuable in the long term, et cetera. Um, versus if you really just, you have some debt you're trying to pay off, you know, and you need to do that in the next six weeks, you know, those are very different answers. But, um, you know, I would say like a couple of principles are like, first of all, let's focus on your skills, uh, less so your passions, less so your, your hobbies and things, but it's more like, what are you good at? Right. And there's a, there's a connection between, you know, for most of us, what we're good at and what we enjoy doing. You know, it's like, if you're actually really good at something, you tend to like that. And so, but by focusing on that question of skills, it kind of gets, gets closer to the point of like actually making something that's valuable and useful and helpful to other people, because there's all kinds of things you could be really passionate about. You can go out and follow your passion, but nobody's going to come along and, and, and pay you for that, you know? So focusing on your skills, um, going as quickly as possible from an idea to an actual like offer that you put into the world, uh, a product or a service, something that people can actually pay for and sign up, you know? I think if you ask the average person like out on the street, like, hey, do you have a business idea? Like, oh yeah, I got, a, I got a business idea, you know, it's to do this or do this or whatever. But they haven't really thought through like, what is the actual product or the off the service? Like, how do people give them money for it? How do they sign up, et cetera? So just thinking really, really, really super practically, kind of stripping away all the, all the extraneous stuff that you don't need and saying, well, I've got an idea to do this particular service. What does that involve? How can I make a one page website, even if it looks terrible? you know, to advertise that, how can I put a little payment button on that website so people can click, you know, just trying to get, get uh, to that point of, um, you know, simplicity, but executing quickly. Yeah. Um, I just actually, you know, previously interviewed earlier today, Marianne Cantwell, and, and the topic of our oh, conversation okay. was around creating a business based on your personality and talking about, oh, okay. you know, really understanding yourself. So do you, do you think that that's important as well to really know yourself? Oh, and, I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do actually. I think it's. I'm glad you guys talked about that because I think it's an overlooked, you know, and it's an overlooked component. I think uh, understanding you know, it does connect to skills, like your personality connects to your skills. But uh, you know, how introverted versus how extroverted you are, how much time you like to spend with other people versus how much time you like to spend working on your own. You know, most people fall on like a range or a spectrum of that. It's like most people don't want to spend 100 percent of their time with other people or 100 percent of the time on their own, but tremendous variance there you know so some some folks might say well actually it's really good for me to just kind of go into a little cave and, and work for 80 percent of my time you know they're going to be more productive that way versus other people are like no i actually need to be around other people i need to more of a sales environment it's actually really good for me to talk on the phone all the time you know so that and that's just like one example there's a lot more you can do with it but i think uh just looking at working like your ideal working conditions which mm -hmm. does connect to personality 
uh, is also important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a big one for collaboration and, you know, combining yeah. skills. And I know you run side hustle workshops, you know, in America yeah. and obviously around the world mm-hmm. as well. Um, you know, you get pretty quick results for people, right? So I just really want to get emphasized here to yeah. people that, you know, you can start quickly and you don't need lots of money, right? And sure. if you just follow a basic process and a lot sure. of people get overwhelmed, they have so many ideas, they end up doing nothing. Yeah. Do you have a right. process, Chris, you know, to kind of filter those ideas and try and find the ones to start with? Yeah, well, I mean, look, you know, you said like, I can get results quickly for people or I can get results for people. I appreciate that. But ultimately, it's the people that are doing the work. You know, it's like the listener out there, if they, if this is important to them, and they choose, you know, to invest their time and energy in it, you know, that, that to me is the fundamental, you know, factor of success. It's not whether they've heard me or read a book or anything else. So um, I think that was like the first thing I wanted to say. And a couple, I had a couple other things. Oh, so um, we, we haven't talked really about reselling, but I think it, you know, this question you had earlier about what's the easiest thing to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody out there has no idea what to do at all, and we'll come into this question about ideas, but if somebody has no idea what to do at all, like buying and selling things is like the classic model of commerce going back, you know, to the Egyptians or before, you know, I used to live in West Africa and like every single person in West Africa is an entrepreneur because like they're having to make their own way in life. There's not much formal economy. So buying and selling things, that's how I got started 20 years ago. Uh, just learning I could buy something on, on one place and sell it on eBay or in Craigslist, Gumtree. There's all kinds of little platforms, you know, these days for that. In terms of ideas, um, you feel like you have a lot of ideas. Um, I mean, ultimately, you just need to pick one. You know, ultimately, I think it's better to actually choose something and move forward with it, even if you change your mind later, um, than to like try to find the perfect idea because you're going to spend three months, six months, however long, just going back and forth. Uh, you know, a- as you said, and the cost of failure for most of these kinds of things is is very low. You know, the cost of failure if it doesn't work out, okay, I haven't spent my life savings on it. You shouldn't spend your life savings on it, right? You haven't. You know, like whatever, whatever has happened is a learning experience for you, essentially. And so uh, I always encourage people to think, you know, you're not making a life commitment here. This is not your life partner. You're trying to find something to do for the next few weeks or maybe a couple of months, and then you'll evaluate from there and go on. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely agree with that. So, Chris, what else is happening in your life? I think the World <laughs> Domination Summit has just finished about a week ago, right? So that's, yeah, that's right. been insane once again. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. I mean, like uh, we have, uh, so we have this event, uh, WDS, that draws people from all over the world and we do it every summer in Portland, Oregon. Um, Yeah, that just finished up recently. So that's good. And um, I got the new book out that I'm I'm doing some touring for. It's really fun. This book is very different. It has, has, uh, it's like full color photography throughout. I'm actually trying to show people like all the, rather than just tell people stories and trying to show the stories and like, there's all these different people in America and elsewhere you know, who are doing this and they're not your classic entrepreneur, you know, as you said, they're, there's like regular people out there. So I'm doing that and, you know, just working on stuff. I feel really fortunate, you know, uh, Christian, I'm sure you do too. Like, I feel like I have a good life and I just enjoy uh, being able to, to, you know, do more things. Yeah. Yeah. We um, had Chelsea Dinsmore on as a guest. Uh, oh last yeah. Year. Oh, I, I love her. Chelsea obviously yeah. had a, you know, she did a fantastic so presentation for you, didn't she? Uh, yeah, she's w- great. She's so good. Yeah. So yeah. just to leave us on, Chris, you know, what's been one of your, if you can pick one, maybe recent favorite story or one that you'd just like to share quickly with our listeners of, of one of your guests on uh, Side Hustle School, just to give some inspiration. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think, let's see, what have I been working on recently? That's good. I mean, like, I, I always find stuff that I never imagined. Um, there's this guy who is making uh, bat houses, you know, bats like the flying right. bats, uh, <laughs> you know, it's actually like this guy making these houses, like encouraging, uh, it's, it's like a whole environmental kind of thing, which I was like, well, I had no idea about. He's doing very, very well with that. Got a woman who's making scarves and selling those scarves on Etsy and actually making like 40 to $50,000 a year on the side doing that. Um, just, just featured, well, actually in the book, there's a story of a woman who has three older sisters uh, she was part of planning all three of their weddings and noticed that, first of all, like wedding dresses are very expensive. Everybody knows that. But also the wedding accessories are expensive and unnecessarily so. So you like, like your veil and your tiara and all that kind of stuff for the bridal party. And all these things are just being worn once, right? They're just being worn once and then that's, that's it. So maybe your wedding dress has some sentimental value, but to do all these other things, you know, do you really need to keep them for the rest of your life? Uh, and so she said, why isn't there a rental market? 
you know, for these things. And so she started a little business called Happily Ever Borrowed. Um, and for her day job, she's like a buyer for luxury brands. So she has all these connections and was able to kind of set this up. And so it's a, it's a perfect business because, you know, she's helping brides, you know, get access to, to these items and sometimes like better quality items than they could get, you know, themselves because they're, they're renting them. And she made, I think, $80,000, you know, last year doing this on the side. She still has her day job. So I thought that was interesting. I like stories where people are like helping people, but also doing well for themselves. And I have a lot of those. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, for people listening right now, one lucky listener is going to get a copy of awesome. this fantastic book, cool. Side Hustle. But tell us, tell us how people can find out about the new book, Chris. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, well, the new book is called 100 Side Hustles. Uh, you should be able to ask for it in any bookshop or on Amazon or wherever you wherever you shop for books. Yeah. And if anyone wants to tune into the podcast or just follow you and see what's happening, where are the best places for them to go? Thank you so much. Uh, it's, uh, so the podcast is called Side Hustle School. It's every day. It's completely free. You can get it at uh, Apple Podcast or SideHustleSchool.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Yeah. And absolutely. That is an essential one that's on my playlist every day. So, um, Chris, I really appreciate your time and wish you all the best of luck with everything that you've got going on. And hopefully we'll catch up again around the world sometime soon. Yeah. So I look forward to that. Thanks so much. 